Hello everyone, my name is Natalia Lauk and this is Play Along Tutorial for Mazurka by Maria Shimanovska from Book 2 by uh, Faber and Faber Development Artist Series, page 26 and 27. So before we start, I want to tell you this piece is unique. Uh, first of all, it's by women composers. There's not that many, right? Especially in the 19th century. Mazurka is a Polish dance and one of the very special things about mazurka that uh, you want to lean on the first beat and beat two and three are going to be much lighter. Also make sure your left hand is not playing loudly because that's a typical mistake when we hear more, le more left hand than right hand. So make sure your left hand is playing much lighter. So that means you're keeping your fingers a little bit closer to the surface of the keys and not doing something like this, right? And your movement is supposed to be mostly out of the keys rather than in the keys, okay? I hope that makes sense. So basically, you move your hand in this way, like you need in a dough, and on your way up, when your hand is going up, That's how you create lightness in your accompaniment, okay? So first I'm going to play it slowly. Go ahead and try to follow along. Uh, maybe hands separately. You choose which hand you want to practice first. And then I'm going to give you more advanced, more sophisticated version with a faster tempo and a little bit more sophistication in the first beat when I'm going to be leaning toward the first beat more. So like this, one, two, three. One, two, three. When you will be playing more advanced music, you will come across uh, famous mazurkas by uh, Frédéric Chopin, the fa most famous Polish composer and uh, genius of piano. So let's start from very beginning. One, two, three. So that was slower version, and let's see if you can follow up with the faster one, if you can keep, <laughs> keep up with me. You probably can, especially after, if you practice hands separately with a slower version, okay, and then putting it together and making sure you're feeling absolutely comfortable. So before we'll keep going, pay attention to measure four when you have those graced or uh, sometimes people call them crash notes. So we're going to play them, instead of playing them too short, so uh, nobody would be able to hear the beauty of this. So this is almost like a bird song, right? When you hear a bird going, didi, didi, didi. So if the crush note, or the, the note that is crossed, crossed like, like this, uh, grace note is too fast, we are not enjoying its beauty. So make sure to play it one, two, ta-da, before the beat. If you play it, it's hard to hear. Okay, so let's try it faster version. In faster version, it's gonna hear, it's gonna feel a little bit more put together like this. So make sure your forefinger 
is lifting the key very fast instead of being stuck there, okay? And you want to move your hand in like this, like you open in the bottle a little bit towards your third finger. So it's almost like you, <laughs> you cannot really step on your fourth finger. It's almost like you're limping. Okay, so let's try, let's try faster version. One and two and three. You probably noticed that I put a little ritardando or slowing down at measure 16 because I was finishing the phrase and if you finish a phrase or a sentence or a paragraph uh, and you want to give it a little time to, you know, to process, uh, you want to give your audience a little time to process this, okay? Because you return into original material and this turn it's taking time like this not don't play it casually don't play it. so that's why i put the written uta there so it feels that creates the moment of anticipation of excitement because you're not just casually keep going right you create this tension that allows you to grab people's attention and make them go oh, what is going to happen next so good luck with this piece uh, and I'm looking forward to hear you playing it. <laughs> 